today with two of the stars of the 12. We have Ron Bomer and we have Jeremy Kushner here. Both of you have been on Broadway, so just tell us a little bit about your distinguished career so far. <laughs> okay, um, well let's see. Uh, I just closed Ragtime, played Father in Ragtime. Uh, I've played The Phantom in Phantom of the Opera, uh, the Scarlet Pimpernel and Scarlet Pimpernel, uh, Joe Gillis in Sunset Boulevard, and I was also uh, Little Mary Sunshine in Little Mary Sunshine. That's not actually true. Uh, I was originally in Footloose, that was sort of the first thing that brought me to New York, and then uh, since then I've done Rent, and on the road I did Aida and Rent, and um, just got finished doing Jersey Boys in a number of different cities. Tell us just a little bit about your characters, and I guess the process of going about uh, creating these characters. Yeah. Well, we kind of, each character is sort of a dual character, because the premise of the piece is that this is a rock band who is at its at the end of their existence together. They all hate each other, they're ready to break up. Uh, everybody's had it. And uh, Pete, who I play, is sort of, he's got a last ditch idea to sort of hold the band together and save it. And the idea is that he writes this piece. Uh, not unlike the, the Who uh, wrote Tommy, he's written The Twelve, and he sent it out to everybody, and nobody wants to perform it. Uh, so, uh, largely because we're a rock band, and he's asking everybody to play these roles, you know, you're this character, you're this character. So the piece starts with everybody ready to kill each other, and we launch into the piece and play it. We, basically, everybody decides if we're going to do it, we're going to do it, you know. So we, everybody has these dual characters, so as the band leader, I'm sort of trying to coax everybody into getting this thing to happen. And then as Peter, we have, have not dissimilar roles, which is, you know, uh, Pete, Peter, the apostle, the disciple, uh, is sort of charged with the sense of figuring out what their mission is now that they've lost their leader. How do, how do we continue? So you got both stories going at the same time. Thomas, uh, known to a lot of people as Doubting Thomas, is uh, it's sort of, I mean, sort of self-explanatory. He, uh, the last person that ends up, um, without, you know, spoiler alert, the last person that ends up, you know, really sort of um, deciding to, to go out and, you know, their, their, their final mission is to go out and sort of preach this gospel, right, uh, was Thomas. And the arc of the show is between the two of us, sort of him trying to convince me and me trying to convince him that this is a bad idea. In terms of rock versus Broadway, how is this different in terms of your vocals? I mean, here you really like have to have those powerhouse voices. So how are they really different? Well, I mean, I think that it's funny because there's there's definitely like the guys that have done musical theater before and then there's the rock and roll guys that are coming in um, and I talked with uh, Sophia who's plays, uh, who plays Mary Magdalene in the show and she was like it's so funny you guys like it's definitely like a process to learn how to do this at 10 o'clock in the morning first of all when you're rehearsing and then and then to actually like rehearse all day long and to do it because you know when you do when you do when you're hitting it in a rock show it's totally different you're sort of doing one or two in a row and then getting out but here it's you got to do it eight times a week and I think both of us have now done some rock stuff and uh, it, it's a it's a skill to sort of get used to it. But then there's also now we have to, the, the the guys that are doing the rock stuff in the show or the guys that that come from sort of the more rock and roll world are so amazing in our show. It's a really nice mix of people. When people walk away from this, what do you want them to take with them? I, I mean, I learned a lot just working on this piece um, uh, about these stories and stuff. But I think it's just a, a really good rock and roll piece. Um, the, the music, it, it, there's so many things you could take away from this. I mean, if you want to take the story, if you want to, you know, learn something about these these stories. Uh, but also, just a real appreciation for Neil. I mean, he's really, I've heard a lot of his music before, but this is really some amazing stuff that he's written for this show, so. I mean, it's a resurrection story, of course. You know, uh, it, it is the story of, you know, finding how to move on when everything falls apart. And contained in the piece, of course, is the resurrection. You get this sense of, you know, we can move forward. There is, you know, a sense of life after death, a sense of that there's always hope, there's always something larger beyond this. But 
as Jeremy said within that, it's just a great rock show. There's some fantastic tunes in this. And for us, even though we're playing these characters and, and you know, staying within the piece, we're constantly just wanting to just do this because yeah, the, yeah. the band is just ridiculous. They're so great. <laughs> Can it be that he pledged just like a real man? Can it be he was nothing but a real shame?